Hey everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at the latest adventure for D&D 5e. This is the Tomb of Annihilation. So here we have it, the Tomb of Annihilation. This is the latest D&D 5e adventure. This is an adventure module, not a rule book or any kind of other supplement or splat book, uh, but it has a full storyline uh, for you to run your players from levels 1 through 11. And uh, it says, Dare to defy death in this adventure for the world's greatest role-playing game. On the back, we can read the little... Uh, pitch here. Welcome to the jungle. A death curse has befallen everyone who's been raised from the dead. Its victims are rotting away, and all efforts to reverse the decay have failed. The souls of the dead are being stolen by one, uh, one by one and trapped inside a necromantic artifact. Only its destruction will free the trapped spirits and allow the dead to be raised once more. All paths lead to Chult. A mysterious land of volcanoes, jungles, and the ruins of fallen kingdoms. Below them all awaits a deadly tomb. The trap is set. Will you take the bait? A Dungeons & Dragons adventure for characters levels 1 through 11. For use with the 5th edition player's handbook, monster manual, and dungeon master's guide. They also do make use of some Volo's guide monsters, but they're kind enough to include those monsters in the... Uh, the appendix here so that's pretty cool uh, but yeah nice tomb of annihilation logo here you've got the i think it's like the green devil or something green demon uh face that's uh i think pretty well known i'm not super steeped in the history of this but maybe it's from the tomb of horrors or something like that now uh this right here is a sererac who is also pictured on the dungeon master's guide which i'm going to grab off the shelf real quick so yeah here he is on the dungeon master's guide uh featured on the cover there uh, so he is a very famous uh, villain, maybe you could say. I don't know, a bad guy, big bad from the uh, Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Uh, he is a lich, or a demi lich, or an arch lich, or depending on how how you want to phrase it. He is also uh, in Tales from the Yawning Portal because they actually have the original Tomb of Horrors storyline here. If I can find it. There we go, there he is, okay. So, uh, this is a little bit different, but it definitely takes some inspiration from the Tomb of Horrors. A Sererac has a, a thing for building tombs to watch people suffer in, and, uh, and yeah. So, this is a tomb that he built. As we open up here, we've got that, once again, that famous iconic face. It's also on the uh, tin for the dice, which I did a review of. I will put a link to the review right up there, but the short version is, eh, meh. But there are some dice that accompany the adventure here, sold separately. Uh, here's a foreword from Chris Perkins. Talks a lot about kind of humor and kind of the, I don't know, just the fun of the game, which is kind of an interesting, uh, interesting little bit there. So I always like to read the disclaimer here, so we're going to read that. This adventure will make your players hate you. The kind of simmering hatred that eats away at their souls until all that remains are dark little spheres of annihilation where their hearts used to be. P.S. Don't forget to tear up their character sheets. How nice. Lots of playtesters here. Uh, and then you've got the table of contents. So you've got an intro, chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, chapter 5. And then you've got some uh, character backgrounds, which is kind of cool. They've got some custom backgrounds for this, just a couple. Some random encounters, uh, discoveries, including flora and fauna and magic items. Monsters and NPCs. And uh, player handouts. Lots of cool player handouts we'll take a look at. And uh, Trickster Gods of Omu stat blocks. So I have I have flipped through this book. I have not read it. This is not going to be a full review. Uh, this is just going to be me kind of flipping through the book and sharing some of my thoughts and showing you guys some pictures, some pretty pictures, and uh, it should be good. So uh, this is kind of cool because there is a pronunciation guide. We have not seen that before. They have a major NPC, the name pronunciation, and a little description, and also the page number. Pretty cool. Lots of uh, difficult names in the D&D uh, lore, especially in Chult. <laughs> Story overview here. So I've already told you some of the basics here, but the Yan T are definitely heavily involved. This guy named uh, Ross Nasi. Chult is a very you know tropical jungle type of region. And then you've got Acerarak involved. So he is the one who kind of sets things in motion. He has found this, uh, I think it's an atropal, this object that consumes souls. And there's a soul monger that is feeding the souls to the atropal. 
And when it consumes enough souls, the Atropal will transform into an evil god. So the goal is to destroy the soulmonger. The goal is not actually to defeat a Sererak, although I think that the players can encounter him. Uh, running the adventure here, so it does say Volo's Guide, um, but you don't need it. Abbreviations, adventure summary, uh, who is a Sererak, that's kind of cool because it gets into a little bit of the history um, of how he's been used in D&D. Uh, there's this bit about the death curse. So this curse actually is causing people to wither. And it says here, um, the soulmonger was activated 20 days ago and remains active until it is destroyed. While the soulmonger is active, the following effects are in play. Any humanoid on the planet that has been brought back from the dead begins to waste away. Its hit point maximum is reduced by 20, one for each day the soulmonger has been active, and decreased by one every midnight until the soul monger is destroyed. So ostensibly, I think people with less than 20 points who have been raised, uh, 20 hit points who have been raised from the dead would probably already be dead, I think. And, um, and the others are, are withering fast. So that's bad because in Dungeons and Dragons, there's, you know, typically resurrection spells and, um, and, and gods raise people from the dead and, and that sort of thing. So not so good. People who now die, their souls are uh, consumed. And there is no hope of resurrection. Uh, meat grinder. You can run it as meat grinder by making death saving throws a lot harder. That's a roll of 15 or higher instead of a 10 or higher. So that can just make it much more lethal. And there's this bit about how souls can be devoured. There's a bit of a random chance there. Um, replacement characters. Ticking clock. Character advancement. Suggested levels. They also have this bit about if you are starting at higher levels, here are some, some ways you could adjust. Uh, starting the adventure... Syndra Sylvain is a uh, someone who has been cursed and has figured this out, and uh, and she's kind of I think one of the main quest givers here. There's also these uh, character hooks, which is really cool. Um, based on the backgrounds, these are kind of ways that your characters might be getting hooked in here. Why? What is their interest in going on this adventure? In other words, so you can see that some of the uh, backgrounds listed here are from the PHB, the Player's Handbook. Some are from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, and there's uh, these two that, from the appendix: the Anthropologist and the Archaeologist. So that's kind of cool. Welcome to Chult. Chult is hot and tropical, guys. Here's the races of Chult. Uh, the Chultans, they're humans, and uh, some names there, kind of cool. The Aracocra, which are these bird-like creatures. Batiri, they're goblins. Uh, this is really cool. Battle stacks. This is like a living totem pole of terror right here. <laughs> Super cool. The art in this book overall is really nice. Uh, you've got dwarves, frost giants, grungs, which are these frog folk. They're kind of cute, but they're evil. Terra folk, uh, which are flying reptilian humanoids like ter pterodons, pteranodons, whatever. Tabaxi are feline humanoids. Uh, the undead, were tigers, the yon ti. These are snake people, reptilian in nature. And here you have it, guys. Dinosaurs. Wizards of the Coast just went for it, guys. You can ride dinosaurs. You can race dinosaurs in this adventure. All right, so their arrival. Here's a bunch of side quests. Overall, I, I, again, I haven't read it, but my impression is the way the chapters are laid out is very sandboxy. Like it's here's a ton of locations for this region, and it seems like you probably don't have to do them all, um, like all the side quests and everything. Uh, well, obviously they're side quests, so you don't have to do these. But in the other chapters too, I feel like the lo the way the locations are laid out, like they can kind of maybe skip some. Uh, I'm not totally sure of that. Be I would actually be interested in hearing uh, someone who has read the thing in its entirety, uh, if that is true. But it seems very sandboxy. Locations in the city. So this is Port Nyanzaru. Maybe I'm saying that right. And so you've got all these locations in this city. This is where they arrive. And it seems like the biggest kind of populated, civilized city in Chult. City, city denizens. Yeah, so some NPCs, things for sale. Nice little map there. Factions. Uh, things to do. Insect repellent. Yeah, that'd be important, I guess. Uh, rain catcher. Dinosaur racing. Here it is. Betting on dinosaur races and racing dinosaurs. All our dreams have come true, guys. Betting, racing, finding a guide, 
So I remember hearing about this in the pre-production stuff. They were talking about how not all the guides are trustworthy and each of them have their own angle, basically. And, uh, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to uh, what guide you choose to guide you through Chult. Gathering information. So here's a rumors chart. It's pretty cool. Great art throughout the book. It's very vibrant and colorful. The expedition begins. So chapter one seems like they're just kind of getting to know the city and doing some things. And then chapter two, they're actually starting and setting out from the city with the information they have learned and possibly with a guide. Travel distances, navigation, dehydration. Um, this is an awesome map. And I will also show a little video. I, I ripped it out of the back. Uh, it's got perforated pages. I did so quite carefully and rather successfully, I might add. Uh, but yeah, they're, you can rip this map out of the back. And what a cool feature. I wish more... Wizards of the Coast modules, D&D modules, had a big fold-out map like that. I hope that's something that they plan to include in all of them from now on because it's a really great feature. You can hang it on the wall. You can spread it out on the table when you're gaming. Uh, it's just really cool. And there's even a, um, a player's version that has more blank space here. Diseases. You got mad monkey fever, shivering sickness, throat leeches. Sounds delightful. Random encounters, locations, and chult. Uh, this is cool. This uh, dragon turtle, I think it's called. Reef sharks. So there's lots of maps in here, lots of little encounter maps, uh, different places they could go in the jungles of chult. So it seems like there's a heavy emphasis on exploration from what I can tell. Cool tower in the middle of the jungle. Fort. So I'm speeding through a lot of this. There's a lot of content here, you know, descriptions, typical kind of uh, descriptions of dungeons or locations and uh, what you might find in different parts of them. Whether that's NPCs, enemies, treasure, items. Albino dwarf warriors. Frightening. So yeah, obviously a lot of the monsters you are going to need a monster manual for. They're not all going to be listed in this book in the appendix. But we will get to the appendix where they have a lot of them. Some nice looking fellows there. Cool picture of an Aarakocra. That's, yeah, lot, lots of unique maps. Not just plain old top-down gridded maps, but lots of kind of, you know, side view or isometric view maps too here and there. Nangalore. Oh, wow. Wreck of the Star Goddess. That's a cool one. Looks like a ship that got caught in a tree. Wormheart Mine. Queen Grabstab. <laughs> what a name. Oh, and once again, they just went for it. It's a T-Rex with a rhino horn and exotic bird feathers. Very cool. <laughs> but chapter 3, Dwellers of the Forbidden City. Okay, so this is the city of Omu, uh, which appears abandoned, but uh, is not exactly. So if they can get an overhead view, I think they can uh, get a map of the city. And there's a handout back there that you can actually give players. The handouts, I'm not really sure if we can take a look at those a moment here. I'm not really sure if uh, they are intended to like be torn out. Like they don't look like they're perforated, uh, so I would imagine I would probably just make copies of them, use a photocopier or a scanner, and uh, do it that way. But yeah, there are some handouts here in the form of like notes and and maps. Here's the map of Omu. <clears throat> History of Omu. Good stuff. Puzzle puzzle cubes. I like the sound of that. Always use some puzzles. So that's the sort of thing that you know I could definitely take and uh, and use in my game, even if I'm not running this module. It's it's nice to have cool puzzle mechanics for sure. Something that I am not very good at coming up with on my own. The nine shrines. Gladiator cells. Ooh, I wonder if you can fight in the gladiator pit. Hmm. A 
the tabaxi there. Twinga wagon. Chief Yorb. Chief Yorb looks awesome. He is decked out. Oh man, that's a cool picture. I've seen this one before. Just a really cool Yon T picture. Flaming sword. Okay, so this is chapter four, Fane of the Night Serpent. So Rosnacy is uh, a major um, NPC who's uh, a bad guy. <laughs> and uh, Fenthaza, and they're both uh, Yon T. Uh, bad guys from what I can tell. Fane of the Night Serpent. And here is Fenthaza. Great art there. Prisoner Pits. Rasnasi's Lair. Yonti Ness. With a Venom Distillery. Huh. Interesting. And uh, and then you've got Chapter Five, the Tomb of the Nine Gods, and I think that this is like the the main final location, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, pretty huge. So this is the temple, and it's like from here 125 to page 190ish, I think. Yep, 190. All right. Rise of the Tomb, nourishing the Atropal. Tropal again is the artifact that actually consumes the souls forever. Exploring the tomb, the tomb inhabitants. Modified spells, that's kind of cool. Spell restrictions. Uh, spirits of the nine trickster gods, and those are in the back here too. Trickster gods of Omu. Little cards you could give your players maybe. I don't know. I w can't imagine really cutting those out. But maybe. So level one. So yeah, this is just a huge dungeon. Here's a tomb dwarf. He looks kind of cool. The Rotten Halls. So yeah, I'm going to skip through a lot of this. I haven't read it. I don't have a ton to say about it, guys. I wish I uh, had time and had, had more to say here. But um, it's just, it's it's a big dungeon. Um there are NPCs, there are monsters, there is treasure. Um, I can tell you that much. There, But there are some really horrifying things from what I've, you know, just, just flipping through. Some terrifying things, really. Just does not sound like a pleasant place. A revolving room. Pretty cool idea. Wraiths and flesh golems. And, oh, frescoes. Oh, how delightful. Gargoyle Guardians. This is a cool picture. Love that. It's got four arms. The Lizard Den. Chamber of Horror. Oh, and this is cool. This is really terrifying. <laughs> you got these creatures crawling out of the, the face. A blind artist. Hmm. Go figure. Unk's Tomb. Unk. This is an interesting piece of art here. It's a little, a different style. It almost looks like a side-scrolling video game or like something from Darkest Dungeon or something. Overall, there there are quite a few pages in here without a, a ton of art, but that's okay. I don't mind. There's still, there's enough good art in here. I could always handle more. But this is one of the more terrifying pieces in here, for sure. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Man. Crazy. The Hag Dolls. The Cradle of the Death God. Okay, sounds unpleasant. The Hall of Finality, the Chapel of Hate. Oh, man. So is this the Atropal? I think it might be. Let's check here. Look in the appendix. Yeah, I think it is. Huge undead titan. Okay, so yeah, that's that's <laughs> really terrifying. It's got like eight umbilical cords. Getting toward the end here. You can tell the conclusion. Destroying the soul monger frees the souls trapped inside it. It ends a Sererax death curse. Characters who accomplish this goal will have saved many lives. And if word spreads of their heroism, wealthy and influential NPCs come forward bearing gifts of thanks. Um, 
Yep, and on it goes. Lost treasures, relics of the past, magic items. Um, so yeah, cool. More adventures. This concludes the Tomb of Annihilation. Space limitations prevent preclude us from exploring Chult in its entirety, but you can create your own Chult-based adventures and publish them at the Dungeon Master's Guild. Huh? That's a good idea, guys. All right. So then you've got your character backgrounds here, the anthropologist, uh, the archaeologist I mentioned before, random encounters, huge chart, and then description. Description, description, more charts. Dead explorers, let's roll for one. Gotta do it. I got a four. The gnawed and charred bones of a humanoid. This unfortunate was murdered and cannibalized by his starving, fever-crazed companions. Whew. Man. <laughs> So lots of encounters here. You got Omu encounters. You got the uh, discoveries, flora and fauna, including like you know, dancing monkey fruit and manga leaves and yaka and waka nuts and wild root. All kinds of yummy stuff. You got magic items. That's cool. Seven magic items. And I assume they use some from the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. And then you've got your uh, monsters and NPCs. A Sararak is a challenge rating of 23. So, yeah, have fun with that one. Albino Dwarf. This is adorable. Almiraj. It's a unicorn bunny leopard. Brontosaurus, so yeah, you've got your dinosaurs in here for sure. Dragon bait. Fire newt. Look at the flying monkey. It's adorable. Man. And it's like 1d4 minus 1 piercing damage, so it'd make a great pet. Oh, frog hemoth. Nice. Giant snapping turtle. Oh, here's the grung. These are these uh, frog warriors. Lawful evil, it says. That Kamadon. Wow. That's cool. Looks very chulty. Kobolds. Mix mix Miss Waxner and Nah. Something like that. <laughs> Terra Folk, there you go. <clears throat> and here's some Yon T. This is Rosnacy, actually. Stegosaurus, Tabaxi Hunter, Tabaxi Minstrel. That's cool. The Sioux Monster. Wow. Haven't seen one of those before. Zandala, Yellow Musk Zombie, Zindar. So, man, all kinds of stuff. Oh, that's cool. A Gorillon Zombie. Seems like there's a lot of, like, jungle undead, for sure. Zorbo, that's almost cute, but it's too evil to be cute. And that, wow. <laughs> wow. I remember them talking about this, actually. An undead T-Rex with, like, undead coming out of his mouth, too. So that's just... That's just creepy. And then you've got your handouts here. Um, so, yeah, lots of, like, notes and stuff like that. Little notices, uh, puzzle cubes, map, plaques and puzzle stuff, journal excerpt, puzzle stuff, and then you've got these little cards for the uh, trickster gods. So that's it. That's the book. Um, so far, so good. I like it. I have not read it in its entirety, but I look forward to reading it. And I can definitely see that there are some things that I will make use of in here in my own homebrew stuff, even though I generally don't run modules. Uh, and then the main reason for that is because I find it takes a lot of prep to read a module and to prepare actually takes more time because you have to know it really well. And the, the main reason, however, is that I just don't have a regular enough gaming group. Uh, we're lucky if we're getting together like once every two months these days with my home group. Uh, so if I was running games every week, uh, I think a module would be much more feasible and I'd be much more interested or even every other week. Um, but yeah, it's just not something I want to jump into a big adventure uh, when I'm gaming so irregularly. Uh, but 
For those who want to run it, I would say so far on the surface, it looks like it's worth the $49.95 price tag. Um, I mean, when you think of how much gaming you're going to get out of something like this. Uh, you can get it for cheaper on Amazon. It's probably closer to $30. I imagine most of the D&D books are. I will put a link to the Amazon product down in the description below. That is an affiliate link. And um, yeah, if you have this book, I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on it? But my, my uh, impression definitely is favorable. I think that uh, Chult brings something new in terms of setting. It's not the Sword Coast. It's just a little bit different, a little more exotic. I would still love to see them tackle completely new settings. Let's get out of the Forgotten Realms and give us a Dark Sun book. Give us an Eberron book. Give us something, Wizards of the Coast. You got you to gotta do it eventually. So just, just do it. Okay, but uh, anyway, overall, I would say this this is a cool book. If I was going to be running an adventure module, uh, this definitely is a, a contender for that. But anyway, that's going to about do it for this one, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. If you have this book, I would also love to hear your thoughts on it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you're following me on the Facebooks and the Twitters, guys. There's links down in the descriptions below for that stuff, too. So, yeah, everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.